welcome to my channel i hope you have subscribed and kept notifications on and please do share these with your colleagues uh, these are basic videos which are made just to uh, stimulate you to learn more and i am sharing the playlists related to these topics so i have covered thermoregulation covered jaundice and oxygen today i will discuss hypoglycemia or glucose balance in the body again it will be a simplistic approach and uh, when i discussed oxygen i mentioned that for the fuel of the body we need glucose and uh, hypoglycemia is one of the manifestations where your glucose levels go down the reason glucose is important is because the body needs to function adequately and you need a fuel glucose is a primary fuel for uh, some of the organs so you do have the alternative fuel systems where uh, ultimately glucose is produced in the tissue but from alternative fuels like amino acids or free fatty acids and ketone bodies can be a source as well there are situations like uh, risk factors for uh, hypoglycemia in the newborn which we will discuss where a high insulin level or lack of fuel leads to lack of these alternative options and that's why glucose directly becomes an important requirement so uh, the brain and the heart and adrenal glands these are organs which need a high uh, dose of glucose intake continuously and the blood stream has a function in liaison with the digestive system the glucose enters the blood the liver has an important role the pancreas secretes the hormones the insulin and the glucagon which are important to regulate the glucose balance and obviously the blood circulation which carries oxygen as we discussed earlier also carries the glucose to the various tissues so in the lack of glucose you get hypoglycemia if you have no option to produce glucose from your alternative fuel so when you have a reduced intake for example you are fasting your body starts going into the catabolic phase where your tissues start getting broken down you receive uh, release amino acids from your muscles you release free fatty acids from the fat stores and these are carried to the various tissues where they can be utilized either the liver uses gluconeogenesis to synthesize glucose from these or the brain can directly use ketone bodies or free fatty acids for example in a temporary phase but if you have a high insulin level or any other factor which affects this alternative fuel production you cannot use it adequately we have an important concept called the glucose infusion rate which is the amount of glucose that's uh, carried in the blood uh, this is ac actually the amount of glucose released by the liver the liver synthesizes the glucose and it releases it in the fetus and uh the fetus also gets glucose from the uh, maternal uh, glucose so the range of the glucose infusion rate is in milligram per kilogram per minute so it's every minute how much of glucose is going in the blood and it's 4 to 6 milligrams per kilogram per minute from the fetus to the newborn and probably even in adults so this glucose infusion rate is what is the amount of glucose that the body needs to maintain without using alternative fuels if the glucose infusion rate is high uh, your insulin gets triggered and then it starts dropping or if it is low you get glucagon and the stress hormones which is cortisol growth hormone and other factors which uh, stimulate glucose breakdown in the body uh, glycogenolysis glycogen is a fat source in the liver which can be broken down to immediately release glucose so uh, a newborn baby a term baby is born with say 500 gram of glycogen uh, but uh, this gets consumed by 24 to 36 hours a baby who is growth restricted or premature doesn't have adequate glycogen store so they are not able to provide this so uh, if the fetus is continuously getting this glucose infusion from the mother and from the liver soon after birth when the placenta uh, supply stops and the cord is clamped this goes down so there is a stimulation of the alternative options and the stress hormones the cortisol the growth hormone these start rising as a surge in these and this is the phase that we get the physiologic nadir of the glucose so if you test the glucose in well babies after 2 to 4 hours of life you would find that many of them are having a sugar in the low side but these are healthy babies the breastfeeding is starting obviously the milk output of the mother is low i'll uh, refer you to my videos on breastfeeding support as well uh, so you're familiar with the need to stimulate and support breastfeeding in the mothers especially where there are risk factors and also antenatal expression if you have risk factors like an infant or diabetic mother you need to start antenatal expressing by 36 weeks so you anticipate in these babies that you will need a supplement so you are having some milk ready so when you have uh, the physiologic nadir the baby is not affected for two reasons one is this is a healthy baby where they can utilize the alternative fuels it's a term baby who has glycogen stores who has the ability to use alternative fuels that are released during the stress period 
and the second point is that the milk output is going to stimulate and come out soon. So, this is going to last like 24 to 36 hours and the nadir actually uh, happens by 2 to 4 hours and once the stress hormones kick in the sugar starts rising. So, that is the reason we always stress that do not check the blood sugar unless you have risk factors or you have symptoms. So, the risk factors for hypoglycemia stem from the factors which we discussed you may have a low fuel load or you may have uh, factors like a high insulin which affect your ability to utilize the alternative fuels. So, we have an infant of diabetic mother, a large for gestational age baby, a baby with say beckwith Weidman syndrome. These are the categories where you have hyperinsulinism. Maternal medications uh, may affect like beta blockers as well. The uh, low fuel store happens in growth restricted babies and low birth weight babies as well as in premature babies. So, uh, growth restricted babies may have an element of hyperinsulinism as well because the neutro stress uh, leads to a higher insulin release. The infant of diabetic mother has a paradoxical response because in utero they are exposed to a high blood glucose level and the pancreas of the fetus is stimulated to keep the blood sugar in check. So, once the baby is born the relative hyper responsiveness of the pancreas to insulin release continues. So, it is a relative hyperinsulinism even though the baby's blood sugar is on the lower side they produce more uh, insulin and this causes uh, the blood sugar of the baby to drop if your intake is not adequate and as you know in the first couple of days in almost all babies your intake is going to be low. This does not mean that you need to supplement all these babies with formula or IV fluids. Monitoring the glucose is important in the high risk babies and that is why we have protocols. Unless the baby is symptomatic the WHO and the UNICEF clearly define and all the guidelines define that you have to wait for the first feed. Preferably start with skin to skin care, early feeding from the mother. Uh, wait for the first feed to be completed hopefully within the first hour and do the blood sugar one hour after the first feed. This is to avoid excessive intervention in the period when you know that the baby is trying to cope. So, uh, by antenatal expressing is one factor where your milk output starts early in the mother as well. So, she might already have milk and the baby starts sucking and you are avoiding hypoglycemia that way. When you check the first blood sugar, if the sugar is low you can give the antenatally expressed colostrum that way you are avoiding having to give formula. Oral sucrose gel is an option if the baby is hypoglycemic, I am not going to discuss that in detail. If your unit has it, encourage the mother to express milk. Uh, if you have antenatally expressed milk, give that, give the oral sucrose and then continue to monitor the sugar within an hour or so to see the response. If the sugar does not improve, you may need to consider formula. A pre premature formula has slightly high calorie and glucose load, so you can consider that as well in these babies to avoid needing admission to the NICU because the sugar does not pick up. Remember that whenever you have to supplement feeds for a baby, make sure the mother gets enough support to encourage, she is encouraged to express milk, she is breastfeeding regularly, she does not get discouraged. Uh, she does not feel that she does not have milk, so she needs to use formula. So, clearly educate them that this is a temporary measure purely to tide over this uh, period when the baby needs alternative fuel or additional support. Also make, uh, make sure you inform her that this is normal that all mothers go through this first two days when the milk takes time to come and because she has started to stimulate her milk will be there soon and it is only for these two days that you need and preferably stop the formula before the baby gets discharged. So, once the blood sugar is normal, do not abruptly stop the formula supplement. Make sure the mother has enough milk because these babies continue to be at risk and uh, one or two blood sugar readings normal and you stop the sugar monitoring. But if you stop the formula supplement without ensuring that the baby has enough milk from the mother, you may end up having hypoglycemia again. And remember that hypoglycemia is worrisome because it affects the brain. If the blood sugar stays low persistently, it can affect the brain. I will uh, refer the link to the playlist on hypoglycemia below in the video link and please go through that as well. So, hypoglycemic brain injury is very dangerous. It affects mainly the occipital lobes and it causes MRI changes. The baby can present with fits and the damage is significant because 50 percent of the babies who have seizures from hypoglycemia have neurologic sequel. So, Supporting breastfeeding is one side of it, but preventing hypoglycemic brain injury is very important as well. So, in your overzealousness to stick with uh, exclusive breastfeeding, please do not uh, miss out on hypoglycemia and appropriate management of that.